This week, the seventh day after the nightmare of Eve Carson's murder proved to be the day of reckoning. In a 24-hour period, Durham PD's selective enforcement team executed pre-dawn raids to capture 17-year-old Lawrence Alvin Lovett Jr. and 21-year-old Demario James Atwater, both men with gang ties, criminal backgrounds, and in violation of their probation. Lovett has now been tied to the recent murder of a Duke graduate student from India. We at NC Wanted congratulate the many law enforcement professionals who coordinated this relentless manhunt, including the brave men and women with Chapel Hill Police, Durham PD, U.S. Marshals, and the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation. Thanks to your efforts, two violent fugitives are off the streets, making our communities safer places to live and work. Produced in high definition by Fox 50. Viewer discretion is advised. They come from all walks of life. Tonight, you can stop these public enemies for all time. NC Wanted in High Definition starts now. Good evening, I'm Gerald Owens. Welcome to NC Wanted. Tonight we bring you our next round of fugitives running from authorities in North Carolina. It's time to put these guys away, but we need your help. She was stabbed one time in the neck, and she did have abrasions and contusions on her elbows and knees, which would be indicative of some, some form of a struggle. Less than 24 hours after the murder, police release a composite sketch of a man seen in the area of Lake Wheeler Road when Jenna was killed. I have to have confidence in the person that saw this person to believe that the person they saw reflects what the composite shows. And I have that confidence. Now, as to who the person in the sketch is, that person could mean absolutely nothing to the case. That person could be the person responsible for Jenna's homicide. It could be a person that saw who was responsible for Jenna's homicide. It could be one or all of the above. But I do have confidence that the real person, as depicted in, in the composite, went through that parking lot between 3 and 3.30 in the morning. Police quickly characterize the killing as random, but search warrants of the couple's email show police have not ruled out the possibility that Jenna knew her killer. The keys were still in her car, and Jenna didn't have much money on her. The autopsy report suggests a motive with sexual overtones. Partially removed, though, means partially um, that they were pulled down, but to the, to the degree that it may have suggested one type of crime or another, I, I, I don't think that, that at this stage of the investigation that that inference is accurate. Was she sexually assaulted? There's no indication that she was. With no obvious motive and little other evidence, investigators focus on a cluster of homeless camps in a half mile radius of where Jenna was killed. We identified at least 26 uh, potential camps and interviewed people in each of those. There was a lot made of that by both the Raleigh Police Department and also media, local and national. Now, does that mean that the suspect or the person responsible for this crime wasn't there? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that we spent a, a good amount of energy and effort doing that. Meanwhile, media outlets from USA Today to America's Most Wanted pick up the story, and the search for Jenna's killer goes national. Police follow leads as far away as Texas and Mississippi, and tips pour into the Raleigh Police Department. Friends, family, and detectives appreciate the national coverage, but fear the implication that Jenna's killer is nowhere near Raleigh, North Carolina. They may very well be um, physically long, long gone, but that doesn't mean that information about them, parts of them, anything related to them still isn't here. Raleigh police want to talk to anyone who was driving on Lake Wheeler Road near the Beltline in the early morning hours of June 14, 2007. 
They also want more information about the man in this sketch. He's believed to be Hispanic, about 5'3", weighing 120 pounds, and between 17 and 20 years old. On the night of the murder, he was wearing a black sleeveless t-shirt and baggy blue jeans. If you have any information on the murder of Jenna Nielsen, call us toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can remain confidential. Our next Target 20 fugitive has been on the run for more than 10 years. The Wake County Sheriff's Office says Luis Avendano shot and killed his own roommate. After returning from a long day of work, Luis Avendano, Raul Torres Guillen, and their two roommates kick back with a few drinks at their town home off Simpkins Road in Raleigh. The foursome eventually part ways when Avendano and Guillen head to their next door neighbor's home to continue drinking. They walk inside, but the man is sleeping in the bedroom. At this point, investigators aren't sure what happens because no other eyewitnesses are present. What they do know is either Avendano or Guillen say something that sparks a violent confrontation between the two. Authorities say after the two start their shouting match, Avendano pulls a gun and shoots Guillen. The noise wakes the tenant in the back bedroom. He runs out to find Guillen lifeless on the floor with a bullet wound to the chest. While this is going on, both of Avendano's roommates run next door to find out what happened. They report seeing Avendano escape from the side of the neighbor's house, wave his gun at them, and run into the woods. This is the last time anyone reports seeing Luis Avendano in the area. Investigators say about a week or two before the shooting, Avendano's roommates remember him bringing home a handgun he'd recently purchased. Avendano showed it to his roommates and another friend who came over to hang out. While the group had been drinking, Avendano and his guest got into an altercation that sent tempers flaring, similar to the scenario with Guillen. Avendano pulled his gun and shoved it in the boy's chest, threatening his life, but not actually pulling the trigger. At the time of the murder, Avendano was wearing blue jeans, a blue shirt, and a blue bandana. He's described as 5'8", about 145 pounds. Today, he would be 36 years old and may be using the alias of Luis Maldonado. The Wake County Sheriff's Office also received reports that Avendano may have lost both legs in a train accident. If you have any information about Luis Avendano, call our toll-free hotline right now at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click Report a Tip. You don't have to give us your name. Coming up, a daylight execution of a man in North Raleigh, a Sanford academic who abused young girls, and an uncle in Chapel Hill who raped his nine-year-old niece. Target 20 fugitives Fu Tan Win, Robert Trent Berkey, and Celestino Gutierrez Molina are next. It's been more than a decade, but authorities are still looking for a man they say murdered someone in broad daylight in front of witnesses. His name is Futan Nguyen. He has ties to the Raleigh area and could be using an alias. On this mild winter day in Raleigh, 22-year-old Trey Tan Do decides to visit a nearby Vietnamese restaurant to meet up with an acquaintance. He has no idea this rendezvous is about to go terribly wrong. Around 2.30 in the afternoon on February 10th, 1996, Doe arrives at the Saigon restaurant off New Hope Church Road in Raleigh. Not long after he is seated, in strolls his acquaintance, 21-year-old Fu Tan Nguyen, along with some of his friends. For whatever reason, someone says or does something that sends tempers flaring. Doe and Nguyen erupt into a heated argument, attracting the attention of people inside the restaurant. Furious, Wynn and his buddies take things outside. This gives Doe a reprieve from the altercation. He finishes up and heads back to his car. This proves to be his final act. Eyewitnesses say as Doe walks to his car, Wynn comes out of nowhere, pulls a gun, and executes him right there in the parking lot. Witnesses watch in horror as the victim collapses before their very eyes. Wynn and his accomplices leave the scene in a black 1992 four-door Honda. This is the last time anyone reports seeing Fu Tan Nguyen in the Raleigh area. At the time of the murder, police say Nguyen was living on Sierra Drive in Raleigh. This is where investigators found that 1990 black Honda. Nguyen is a common Vietnamese name spelled N-G-U-Y-E-N, but pronounced Nguyen. There is a reward for information leading to his arrest. If you know anything about Fu Tan Nguyen, his whereabouts, or details about this crime, call us toll-free at 1-866-43-WANTED. 
or log on to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to give us your name. This next fugitive takes the prize for having the most education. His name is Robert Trent Berkey. He attended Appalachian State University and eventually became the department chair of psychology at Emory and Henry College in Virginia. Authorities say this man of higher education is wanted for low and despicable acts against children. In late 2001, Berkey is divorced and his ex-wife is dying of cancer. He meets a new woman online and it isn't long before they meet in person and move in together. At this time, Berkey has a six-year-old son while his new internet girlfriend has two daughters. Within months, the older daughter tells her mother that Berkey has been touching her in inappropriate ways. Before long, the younger daughter tells of more incidents of touching. This prompts the mother to call authorities and move out, taking her daughters with her. On June 2nd, 2002, Berkey is arrested on two counts of aggravated sexual assault of a child. They search his computer and find evidence that leads to five counts of possession of child pornography. Berkey posts bond right away and somehow convinces his girlfriend to reconsider their relationship. Meanwhile, Berkey's ex-wife dies of cancer and he's able to collect on her life insurance policy. Berkey now sees a way out. He stockpiles more cash by withdrawing his life savings. Then, just before his trial is to begin, Berkey leaves a note to his girlfriend, his parents, and his employer, saying he couldn't face the charges. So he was leaving, and no one would ever find him. This is supposedly the last time anyone has heard from Berkey, but authorities tell us he was close to his son and may have figured out ways to contact him. Berkey has strong ties to the Sanford area, where his father and son may be living. Berkey's family also has ties to the Seven Devils community near Boone. Berkey has a distinctive dimple in his chin. Some say he may walk with a slight limp. He takes medicine for depression and high blood pressure. Tonight, there's a reward for information leading to his arrest. If you have any information or know the whereabouts of Sanford native Robert Trent Berkey, call us right now at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to our website at ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to give us your name. It's bedtime for a 10-year-old girl living with her aunt in Chapel Hill. After a kiss goodnight, the girl will call Katrina, climbs under the covers and turns out the light. It seems so innocent, but this innocent little girl is about to experience an act of unspeakable betrayal. Chapel Hill police say in the early hours of October 1st, 2006, a man enters the girl's room and places his hand over her mouth. Terrified, the girl awakens to see someone she knows. It's her uncle, Celestino Gutierrez Molina, a Mexican national visiting the family in North Carolina. Gutierrez Molina proceeds to sexually violate his niece for an agonizing amount of time. The girl tells police the sexual assault goes on so long she could see the sunrise. After he finishes with her, Gutierrez Molina flees the house through a window, taking his belongings with him. Once she believes her uncle is gone, the traumatized girl wakes her aunt to tell her what happened. Meanwhile, Gutierrez Molina runs to a friend's apartment in nearby Carborough, where he bums a ride to RDU International with full intentions of fleeing the U.S. By this time, the girl's aunt is rushing the girl to the emergency room, where doctors will soon discover physical evidence of the assault. Authorities believe it's possible Celestino Gutierrez Molina has returned to his native Mexico. He's described as 5'9", about 190 pounds. He was 44 at the time of the crime. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Celestino Gutierrez Molina, call us right now toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can be kept confidential. He's avoided arrest on murder charges for more than 12 years. Authorities say Willard Eugene Smith was just a teenager when he shot and killed a man. This photo was taken around the time of the murder and is the only picture authorities have. June 16, 1995, it's summertime near the Chatham County line, and 16-year-old Willard Eugene Smith and some friends are cruising the hot afternoon looking for trouble. You got some money on you? I ain't got no money, man. The driver decides it's time to collect on a $20 debt. He proceeds to the East Forest Oaks neighborhood in the Haywood section of Moncure. As they make their approach, Willard Smith and his buddy spot the guy who owes the driver his money. My man, see. No problem, don't you owe me some money? You know, I'm trying to go in the house and get it. Well, get, get, get it, I mean. 
Hey, partner. As he walks away to get the money, Willard Smith begins arguing with one of the other men standing near the Burgundy Buick. While this is happening, 22-year-old Rodney Cotton gets in the back seat and stays out of the fight. No, Rick, no, man. No, man. Soon, Willard goes ballistic and grabs a gun from one of his friends. And the two unleash a hail of gunfire. Willard hits the car several times and shoots out the rear windshield. Tragically, the young man sitting in the back seat is hit in the head by one of Willard's bullets. The victim, Rodney Keith Cotton, is pronounced dead at the scene. His accused killer, Willard Eugene Smith, avoids arrest and has eluded authorities for more than a decade. Authorities say Smith was going by the nickname Pooty and was living on Breezewood Road in the East Forest Oaks neighborhood near the Lee Chatham County line. His mother and brother may still be living there. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Willard Eugene Smith, call our hotline toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Coming up, from respected Marine to accused rapist to murdering a fellow Marine who is pregnant, Target 20 fugitive Cesar Armando Lorian is next. On this day, supporters mourn the loss of Maria Lauterbach and her unborn child. But it's one day of many filled with intense emotions. Captain Rick Sutherland spoke to NC Wanted by phone from the Onslow County Sheriff's Office. The fact that our victim was a female and a pregnant female, it was allegedly marine on marine violence, has caused a lot of emotional sentiment and people have communicated their frustration to us. January 11th, 2008, the Onslow County Sheriff's Office announces the death of Maria Lauterbach and her unborn child. They've been murdered, then burned and buried in Lorian's backyard. This same day, Lorian fails to report for duty. He's already painted over bloodstains in his house and attempted to rob cash from Maria's bank account. The manhunt and murder investigation begin. Clues seem to pop up everywhere. Maria's cell phone is picked up along Highway 24 near Camp Lejeune. Her car is found abandoned near a Jacksonville bus station. Many miles away in Durham, a passerby notices Maria's bank card on the grounds of a downtown bus station. Then Caesar Lorian's truck gets spotted at a Morrisville hotel. It's parked near another bus station and RDU International Airport. We think that we have theories, logical theories, that explain the majority of the evidence that we found so far, but we are still interested in hearing from the public if they have any information as to how any of those pieces of evidence came to be where they were at. So where did Lorian go? Authorities confirm the Marine boarded a bus on January 11, 2008, arriving in Houston the next day. Lorian then allegedly bought another bus ticket, this time to go from Houston to his native Mexico, possibly arriving January 13th in Guadalajara. If he crosses into a country illegally or under an identity that uh, is not his own, then uh, really we would be back to um, square one. Lorian's border crossing triggers the treaties of extradition. Mexican authorities issue a provisional arrest warrant. World Police Organization, Interpol, sends an all-points bulletin to 186 countries, including Mexico. And the FBI creates a wanted poster in Spanish and raises the reward to $30,000. We understand that if he did voluntarily leave this country, he could also voluntarily re-enter at any point. Wherever Lorian goes, authorities will track every lead to find him. But in the end, his desperation and military training could fuel a deadly showdown. We believe he certainly has the capability to be violent. We believe that he is the one who murdered Maria Lauterbach. We've made law enforcement aware that when they get in a situation with him or they apprehend him, that he has the capacity for that type of violence. Lorian is a native of Mexico and speaks fluent Spanish. He has a tattoo of a phoenix rising from the ashes on his left upper arm. He's 21, 5 foot 9, and about 160 pounds. It's possible he's let his hair and beard grow out, and there's a reward of $30,000 for information leading to his capture. If you have information on Lorian's whereabouts, the murder investigation, or about anyone who may have been assisting Lorian in his escape, call us day or night at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can remain confidential. Coming up, Gerald Owens returns to review tonight's cases.
Welcome back to NC Wanted. Time to recap tonight's cases. He's the Target 20 fugitive who investigators say shot and killed his own roommate. At the time of the murder, Avendano was wearing blue jeans, a blue shirt, and a blue bandana. He's described as 5'8", about 145 pounds. Today, he would be 36 years old and may be using the alias of Luis Maldonado. Next, Fu Tan Nguyen is accused of executing someone he knew in a Raleigh parking lot. At the time of this murder, Raleigh police tell us Nguyen was living on Sierra Drive in Raleigh, the site where investigators found his 1990 black Honda. Nguyen is a common Vietnamese name, spelled N-G-U-Y-E-N, -E but pronounced Nguyen. Robert Trent Berkey is the next on our list. He's the former chair of psychology who takes the prize as the fugitive with the most education. Berkey has strong ties to the Sanford area where his father lives and is housing his son. Authorities tell us Berkey was close to his son and may have figured out ways to contact him in Sanford. Berkey's family also has property in the ski and golf community of Seven Devils near Boone. Berkey has a distinctive dimple in his chin. Some say he may walk with a slight limp. He takes medicine for depression and high blood pressure. Tonight, there's a reward for information leading to his arrest. Authorities believe it's possible Celestino Gutierrez Molina has returned to his native Mexico. He's described as 5'9", about 190 pounds. Next is a Marine accused of killing Lance Corporal Maria Lauterbach. She was eight months pregnant at the time of her death. Cesar Lorian is 21, 5'9", and about 160 pounds. He's a native of Mexico and speaks fluent Spanish. He has a tattoo of a phoenix rising from the ashes on his left upper arm. There's a reward of $30,000 for information leading to his capture. Authorities say Willard Eugene Smith goes by the nickname Pootie. At the time of the murder, he was living on Breezewood Road in the East Forest Oaks neighborhood near the Lee Chatham County line. To this day, Smith has family members still living in that area. Take a good look at this photo. Smith was 16 when authorities say he committed the murder, but today he's 28. And though he may have similar facial features, it's possible his appearance has changed dramatically. The case of Jenna Nielsen, murdered last summer in the early morning hours of June 14, 2007. It happened while she was on her paper delivery route near downtown Raleigh. Police have released a composite of someone seen in the area around the time of the murder. Police also want to talk to anyone who passed by the American gas station on Lake Wheeler Road between 3.30 and 4 o'clock that morning. Anyone with information on tonight's cases should call us right now, toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to give us your name. Join us next week as we profile more unsolved cases and wanted fugitives. Remember, together we can fight to protect the quality of life we hold dear in North Carolina. I'm Gerald Owens. Thanks for watching.